Now in the Harvey Norman Lounge on Pet Corner today, I am joined by vet nurse and dog trainer Kelly McFarlane and Heather Landbrook from not-for-profit organisation Bark NZ. Welcome back, Heather. Thank you for having us. And Kelly, us. nice to see you Good here morning. again. Um, let's start with you first, Heather. Since we last saw you, there's been a lot of things in the media about kids greeting dogs. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So um, there's, there's a lot of organisations throughout New Zealand that teach um, child dog safety education. Um, most of us teach it the same way, or at least the same basic principles. Um, but now there's uh, talk of a new way of, of teaching children how to approach dogs. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Um, Kelly, from the dog's eye, uh, which is the better way for a job? Actually, you should probably tell us what those ways are first, Heather. Sure. So, um, f from Bark NZ's point of view, we always teach children to, first of all, ask their own parents before mm -hmm. they go and talk to a stranger about their dogs, then to talk to the dog's owner, because the dog owner knows the dog yeah. the best and might have special instructions for their dog, then to ask the dog if it's okay to interact with the dog, and then to pat the dogs low and slow. So usually chin, chest or shoulder is the best. Um, some of the new ways that are being talked about are skipping out the ask the dog part. So what's going to happen when you do ask the dog? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's all the education <laughs> part. <laughs> um, Kelly, from the dog's eye, which is a better way to, to approach a dog or to, for a child to greet a dog? Uh, for me personally, and I think for a lot of trainers out there, we would say uh, definitely the way Barkins would promote it. So, you, you know, the child is asking permission from the dog. So by holding out their hand slightly, it gives the dog chance to either sniff the hand um, or rub their head against the child. Otherwise, what they might do is the dog might drop their head, turn away, or even try and walk off if they don't want any interaction with that child. Oh, okay, I see. So when you're saying ask the dog, you're doing that thing, hold your hand out so they can have a sniff and a, and a bit of a... Okay, now that makes <laughs> sense to me because I just imagine having this imaginary <laughs> conversation between a child and a dog. Um, Heather, do you think this new way uh, that is being taught, is that going to possibly cause more dog bites or more issues? Yeah, we believe so because when we're asking the dog, we're actually teaching children to look at what the dog is saying in response. So when you ask a question, obviously the right thing to do is to wait for an answer. So by teaching children to ask the dog if it's okay, and that may be different for, for different dog owners and their dogs. The most common way is to let the, the dog sniff a child's hand. So that's a way of saying, is it okay if I pat you? The dog then will have a choice. It will sniff its, the child's hand if they want to meet, or it won't sniff if it doesn't mm. want to meet. And obviously patting down here low on the chest or something, as opposed to on the back. Absolutely. So when we're teaching young children, we have to be consistent. It has to be simple and consistent messages. When we're teaching children that it's okay to pat a dog from behind, we increase the risk of say under fives, rushing up to an unknown dog and, and startling them by patting them on the yeah, back. And nothing's worse than a scared dog because of how they react. <laughs> Kelly, if a dog is to bite a child, what's the likely out outcome for that dog? As I showed you before, is that the case? More than likely. Yeah. The, the reality then is that the dog is being classed as a, a dangerous dog if it's a really, really nasty bite. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, a lot of people, that we do know that, you know, dogs do bite and people love to categorise bites. So it'll be like, oh, my dog just nipped. You know, mm. that's okay. Yeah. Uh, fact of the matter is, no, it isn't. N none of that is okay. But, um, yeah, certainly if, if a child is to get a really nasty bite, then sadly for the dog, they failed. And mm. that's it. And sometimes that can purely come from being startled. So if the child's run up behind, yes. grab the dog. You know, kids like mm. to do this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's pretty much over, over for Rover, okay. unfortunately. Ollie doesn't really look like he's going to be doing much uh, startling. <laughs> at the he seems very relaxed. He is. He's pretty comfortable in his job, yes. <laughs> so what is his job exactly? So he goes into preschools and primary schools and teaches children about how to be safe around dogs. And, of course, he's there for the children to be able to practice their newfound skills by practicing on the dog. Can I have a little practice on Ollie quickly? Indeed you can. So, so I'm going to wake him up oh, because yes. we don't go up to dogs that are asleep. No. So I'm just <laughs> going to wake him no, up. No, do not. No, we do not. <laughs> Ollie, come. <laughs> All right. So now, so the easiest way to ask him if he wants to interact with you is give him something to do that, that you can see that he said yes. Okay. okay. So I'm going to wake him up. Ollie, come. Good, good. All right, now I just remembered that I'm sort of attached yes, to something okay. behind me. <laughs> there you go. So you can ask him if he wants to meet you. And so he's leaned forward, he's sniffed your hand, he's wagging his tail, he's wondering why I suddenly don't have treats in my hand. Hello, Ali, I can eat you now. Oh, you are beautiful. So I've just got a loose lead here. If he didn't want to be here, he could easily turn his head away, turn his body away, or try and walk away from you. Oh, he's just such an adorable dog, and he feels nice and clean too. You've spruced him up with a tail. <laughs> yes. uh, so if you, if you don't want your child to 
to be bitten. Well, nobody wants their child to be bitten. Where do they go? Where do the parents go for information, Heather, about sure. it? And, you know, school programs or school? What do they do? Absolutely. So there are a lot of organisations around the country that do it. So my biggest recommendation is to make sure that it's an organisation that provides full training for their presenters or educators, full assessments for the dogs, mm -hmm. has full insurances to cover the volunteers that are going into the environment, has a... Um, a standard approach, i.e. the way that internationally dog safety is taught right. um, and, and um, yeah, there's, there's Bark New Zealand obviously, which is probably the first place you'd go. <laughs> <Is it> um, <laughs> <laughs> and we do go into preschools, primary schools, holiday programs, community groups okay. and whatnot. So do a bit of research as well. Hey Kelly, Heather, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you too, Ollie for being a nice little gorgeous dog. <laughs> oh, take it home. Uh, and now to our pet of the week. Congratulations to Mr. Cuddles. This is the best name. Look at him. $50 to spend at petpost.co.nz is on its way to your owner, Teresa. And if you'd like to enter your pet, and it can be any type of pet too, just upload a picture on our Facebook page.